I know, champ. But the outcome to this equation remains, it remains the same. Welcome back, everyone. Is Charlie. The Loki Season 2 finale wrapped up a number of overarching plot threads heading into Marvel Phase 6 and Avengers 5. A lot of you have been asking what happened to He Who Remains after Loki broke the loom and created the new World Tree version of the wider multiverse, sitting atop the remains of He Who Remains, Citadel at the End of Time, in his former chair. The chair that he's sitting in was the chair that He Who Remains was just sitting in earlier in the episode. There were a bunch of scenes that they didn't include the ending of episode 6 to explain what actually happened to him. So I'll explain what happened to him between Loki leaving his citadel at the end of time and then fixing the multiverse. Marvel is still currently committed to the Council of Kangs versus the New Avengers in Avengers 5 at the moment. So just in general right now, the whole concept of Kangs is still something that Marvel is working on. And the writer for Loki Season 1 is now writing Avengers 5 too. He already wrote Avengers 6 Secret Wars if that wasn't clear. So there's a lot of energy from the Loki series just in general that's being baked into Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. We have What If Season 2 episodes I'll be doing videos for pretty soon. And they just started releasing the Loki and the WandaVision Blu-rays, so we're giving away a couple copies. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with Loki during Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. He's kind of the most powerful character in the MCU right now next to people like Scarlet Witch with all of her chaos magic. But at the end of the finale, Loki time slips back to he who remains Citadel at the end of time before Sylvie originally killed him during the events of Loki season 1 in that finale. The moment he arrived in was this moment here after she lost all patience with him and made the lunge across the table at him like that's enough. Loki tries to stop her, they have their battle between the two of them where he tries to convince her not to do it. That all took place during the season 1 finale. Originally, Sylvie pushed him back through the portal, back to the TVA. His time slipping started. She proceeded to kill He Who Remains, causing all the problems they had containing the loom during Season 2, basically setting the plot of Season 2 off. When Loki comes back to that same moment in the Season 2 finale, he's figured out how to control his time slipping, and He Who Remains realizes what's happened, like, oh, okay, you understand how to do this now. How many times have you been at this? Oh, come on, you're not telling me you haven't learned how to pause time. He pauses Sylvie in time so they can have a chat just between the two of them where he reveals that he orchestrated the events of season one and season two, these moments here, knowing that everything with the time slipping was going to happen. Like he did it on purpose. It was all part of his grand design. He reveals they never would have been able to fix the loom. All the Victor Timely stuff that he set up at the beginning of season two was part of his grand design, but that was part of the path that he was laying out for Loki to learn how to evolve into the god of stories, the god form of Loki. The whole idea is that in every time loop that they experience, the loom would always destroy all the extra timelines no matter what, like this explosion would always happen no matter what, reset so that only the sacred timeline remained and he just rebuild the TVA when the timeline rebooted again. And this was happening over and over and over again many, many, many times. This is a lot for you. <laughs> I get it. So why don't you just go through this a couple thousand more times get your bearings that's why if he told loki that he didn't fully understand things yet like he hadn't fully gained the power to command time just biologically without any technology that he should try a couple thousand more loops all because he who remains was still trying to get loki to take over management of the sacred timeline from him but his secret plan was to push loki through all these time loops to learn to unlock his god of stories power which then loki shows that he's already learned how to do when he pauses sylvie by flicking his finger the reason He Who Remains created this elaborate time loop for Loki to go through over and over again to evolve this way was because He Who Remains wanted a more omnipotent being to be managing things after he left, someone who wouldn't be dependent upon technology. Notice during those final moments, he also reveals that the Council of Kangs exist outside of time in their base and nothing Loki does will be able to stop them from already existing out there. My variants are already out there. That's because their base is outside of time in a different dimension like the TV, like a pocket dimension. It's not affected by anything that either of them did during Loki season two, even when Loki fixed the multiverse. Loki decides that he's going to beat he who remains finally by not playing his game. He was offered two choices, choose the loom, keeping things status quo or no loom and let any and all Kang variants run wild, creating a new Kang multiverse war just as bad as the first one, if not worse. 
Loki chooses his own third option to break the loom and then sacrifice himself by becoming a custodian of sorts to the multiverse using his newly unlocked God of Stories power of controlling time to keep the tree that is the multiverse healthy. Sort of like a cosmic gardener keeping the tree of all the timelines healthy. Which gets back to his last conversation with Mobius. He asks him, how do you choose what to prune and what to allow? Because he has the power to change anything in the timelines that he wants. He's asking Mobius, how do you know what to change? But when he returns with all the timelines in tow, he who remains citadel at the end of time looks like it's been reduced to rubble, like it's years later and it's decayed to almost nothingness, kind of like it continued to decay over a long period of time. So here's what they did not show in that ending scene after Loki left He Who Remains for the final time. When he leaves, Loki and He Who Remains allow Sylvie to kill He Who Remains like she originally did during the season one finale because the moment that they're in here is back during the events of the season one finale. Remember, Loki jumped back to this time period. So the idea is that the minute that Loki time slips back to the TVA, Sylvie became unpaused like he who remains unpaused her. Then they have that same moment of her killing him like she did during season one. Then she escapes to Broxton, Oklahoma and begins that part of her time loop. It's happening in the past, remember? Then when Loki is ascending to he who remains chair, turning it into his own throne with all the timelines, he who remains has been dead for a long time, so long the Citadel decayed to the point where almost nothing is left of it, just some framework in part of his chair. The whole idea is that Loki is repairing it with his power, like the Kintsugi method golden joinery, turning it into his golden throne, meant to be fashioned after Odin's golden throne that he used to sit on. One of the other important details here too that kind of flows with this, if you couldn't tell, his new horns are made of that same Kintsugi style with the golden veins of the rock from the Citadel in them. It's meant to be his god Loki costume, his Loki who remains costume, because that's basically what he becomes, Loki who remains. So a lot of people are like, wait a minute, he who remains knew about everything that happened during Loki season two. If he had this even greater, deeper plan at play, would he have allowed himself to be killed? Part of the whole idea is that he wanted to leave the job, like he didn't want to work anymore. He'd gotten so bored over the eons, so he was just trying to push Loki to the point where he could do all this on his own without any technology, and he was just waiting for that to happen to allow himself to be killed, to be perma-killed, basically. So if it wasn't clear, He Who Remains is supposed to be perma-dead heading forward after the end of Loki season two. And remember, because Loki controls everything inside all the timelines, Loki can also control everything that He Who Remains does now. When it comes to Avengers 5 though, as he told Loki, the Council of Kangs is still out there, still coming for everyone. They're still a threat. Loki can't stop them as they exist right now because they're in their own little pocket dimension outside of the timelines, and Loki can only control stuff inside the timelines. But that's why they have that moment at the ending with the TVA talking about Kang the Conqueror from Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania being defeated by a bunch of Avengers from the 616 universe. Basically, the TVA is now actively focusing on monitoring the Kang variants from across the multiverse. That'll wind up culminating during Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. It also explains how the TVA can continue to be involved in the events of Deadpool 3 because they will be a big part of Deadpool 3. And as far as Marvel being committed to the whole Council of Kangs storyline in Avengers 5, the way they've set things up is they can change whatever they need to change if they have to, if things go south with Jonathan Majors. Because right now, as far as we know, they're still waiting to find out the results of whatever his trial winds up being. What that means is that they'll still be doing Council of Kangs stuff in Avengers 5 because it's still called Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty. But Darkest Timeline, at the very worst, they would just recast Kang and just continue to use the characters the same way they were going to before with the Council of Kangs. That's part of the reason why during the Loki series, particularly Loki Season 1, they had a bunch of different variants of Loki that looked nothing like Tom Hiddleston. There are a lot of people in earlier videos that were asking about some specific contract clauses that Jonathan Majors had about playing the different Kang variants. There was a lot of confusion over his contract because part of it stated that he would play all the different variants of Kang, which is what they showed during Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania post credit scene. But his contract didn't give him the right to be the only person to play Kang variants, just that Marvel could ask him to play all the Kang variants if they wanted to, not that he had exclusive rights to do that. Right now we're still in the middle of Marvel Phase 5 too, so Marvel's given themselves a couple years till they have to deal with Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, so they don't need to actually use the Kang character or any of the Kang variants for a good long while. 
part of the reason why they've done that is just to give this whole thing with Jonathan Majors time to clear itself up so that they can either bring him back in a couple years for Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty or recast the role with another actor in a couple years. So even though it sucks, we have to wait a couple more years for another Avengers movie to come out. Like it's going to be 84 years between Avengers Endgame and Avengers 5. Right now, Marvel is just kind of using that delay to their advantage just to let things behind the scenes clear up before they actually need to use the Kang character again. For real, like they really need to use him. So when you're looking at like all these different movies and Disney Plus series that are still coming out the next couple of years, do not expect to see a bunch of Kang or Council of Kang stuff happening in the background. This will be a lot of post credit scenes, a lot of X-Men stuff happening. Like we have Deadpool 3 coming up, big multiverse storyline, a lot of TVA stuff going on during that next year. But for example, there's only one Marvel movie coming out next year, and it is Deadpool 3, because they're so confident in it. They basically delayed all their other movies till 2025 just to give them time to work a lot of their issues out behind the scenes, because there's a lot of issues, a lot of chaos going on behind the scenes at Marvel right now. So like the end of Loki season two is like the last time you're meant to see a Jonathan Majors Kang, like Kang just in general, show up for a good long while. Like Kevin Feige is the real control of the multiverse, Kevin Who remains, and he's paused him in time for just a couple of years just to wait out all the problems that he's having to see if they need to recast the character. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of questions about everything that's going on. There's a lot of announcements that they made recently about completely different shows, like a bunch of footage that's been dropping. So of course I'll do videos for everything as we get more news about it all. If you have any questions that I didn't address in this video about any of the characters or going forward what's going to be happening, just write them in the comments below. Everyone click here for my Loki Season 2 alternate ending for the Beyonder version of Loki that he evolved into, and click here for that Moon Knight Season 2 announcement that Marvel just made. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.